Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. My 31 male wife, 28 female, said she doesn't love me anymore and wanted to end the marriage. Found out she has had a 12 plus month affair that started while she was pregnant with our second child. For the last eight years, we have been married. The title of this post implies that my wife told me around six weeks ago, early June, that she no longer loved me and that she no longer wanted to be married to him. I was taken aback, despite the fact that we hadn't been conversing well for quite some time. She said that I made her believe that I no longer cared for her. In the past year or so, my wife has started going out a lot more on her own without me. I broke down in front of him, and we had a little conversation about it, but we didn't go into great length about it. Even though she hasn't spoken anything for over two weeks, she keeps repeating herself. She's been doing a lot of deliberating, and she's very certain of her decision. We have two children, a six-month-old boy and a three-year-old girl. I told her I'd give her some more time to consider her options. Since my wife does not have a place of her own, I went to stay with some friends during the week, I'm still employed full-time, and then took care of the kids on the weekends, while my wife went to her parents' house or with friends since she does not have a place of her own. We're renting a place. We'd been doing this for a few weeks and had some wonderful conversations, but when I arrived to take over with the kids on Friday, she informed me that she'd been chatting with another person for a few weeks and had kissed him when they met up at an event she brought the kids to this week. I was shocked, and she apologized profusely. Until this point, I didn't think we had much of a chance of getting back together so I started asking her questions about everything. Initially, she met him at the gym and only spoke with him over social media, but she later ran into him at a social event. Can you tell me what else you're keeping? Hidden from me, I inquired. She remained silent for the rest of the conversation. She then inquired as to when I intended to begin utilizing dating apps, stating that she merely wanted for me to be content. She said that she did not want me to date someone she was acquainted with. I told her that if she wanted to leave me, she may do so, but that she had no say in the issue. In response, she got really enraged and encouraged me not to get involved in anything right away, but rather to give it some time and to talk with her before proceeding further. I repeated that it was no longer her concern and that I would do what I believed to be in my best interest going forward. She grew upset and said that I would have with anybody and everyone if given the opportunity. I rejected, explaining that I needed time to rest and recover from my illness. She responded that she didn't believe me and that I would most certainly be on the show the next day. She was quite annoyed by the conversation. In my questioning of her, I inquired as to why she was so worried about my talking to other girls, particularly when she was ready to leave me. I inquired as to whether or not there was anything she was hiding information from me. I pushed, and she eventually said no. Finally, she confessed that she has been cheating on me with a mutual friend since May of this year, and she apologized. Her pregnancy with our child would have been about six weeks at the time of the incident. There were various feelings of shock, indignation, and despair that I experienced. Whenever she mentioned that she would be going to the gym in the evenings or when she claimed that she would be with other female friends, she admitted that she would be cheating. Additionally, she said that since he worked strange hours, he would come over to our house and have on our marital bed slash living room couch, among other things, throughout the working day, sole trader. She said that at times, they did many times each week on. Average. I'm in a state of shock. In order to avoid any more contact with this friend, I have blocked him from all social media sites and do not want to see or talk to him again. It's tough not to think there was an emotional connection after all this time, despite my wife's insistence that it was solely and without any emotional connection. I had a lot of confidence in her and had only just begun to have doubts about her. Since the birth of our baby, She's been keeping her phone hidden and spending more time with friends. We are officially finished with her. She can no longer be trusted in any capacity. I have no concerns for our children since she is an excellent mother, and I am certain that we will be able to build a lovely co-parenting routine. So far, we've maintained a nice relationship and began dividing assets. Since she is unemployed and a stay-at-home mother, things are difficult for her at the moment. She is waiting for government assistance to provide her with a place to live. People have suggested that I should evict her and take full custody of the children until she can find a place for them to reside, but I believe that this would be damaging to the children's welfare. My forgiveness for her has already begun to take shape in some odd manner. I still have a sweet place in my heart for her, since she is the mother of my children. 
at least for the time being, I'm going to take the high road and wait for her to figure things out on her own so that we can be the best parents we possibly can be for her. I'll be able to spend the rest of the week with my pals for the foreseeable future. Kicking her out will just worsen the situation. The reality is she's already moved on, and I've come to grips with the fact that she's no longer a member of our family. In six months, my lease on this home will come to an end, and I will begin looking for a new place to live. For the time being, though, I will devote my time and energy to healing and caring for my children and myself. Story 2. Deployed and Destroyed This occurred about 20 years ago, and I'm over it, but I thought I'd share to see if you had any thoughts or had comparable experiences. I never had a good marriage with my first wife, and there were a number of warning signals that I ignored at first since I had no real experience dealing with older women. At the time, I was 23 and she was 28. To cut a long story short, I enlisted in the military after 9-11 because I thought we were headed to war and that I would be deployed. My wife and I fought a lot at this time because she wanted to relocate, and I reminded her that it's not up to me where we go, I'm Uncle Sam's property until my tour is done. Needless to say, orders came down shortly after we were stationed at Riley that we would be deploying to Iraq, despite the fact that we had several times over the following few weeks. It was almost like when we first met so I certainly didn't believe anything was wrong. Fast forward to deployment day, and as you may expect, we're both a shambles. I'll save you the tedious details of the flight over since there isn't much to say. We landed in Kuwait, and I was assigned to 2-34 armor, big boy stuff. We were entrusted with securing several places for rebuilding and reuse, but I can't go into any more detail. I was deployed for three months before we had a post set up enough to receive mail, and make phone calls home using a satellite phone. The first few times I phoned, there was no response, then mail began to pour for everyone, except me. Care packages from family members arrived once a week, and every week I hoped for a letter or anything from home, but nothing arrived, and no phone calls were returned. It came to the point where other troops were contributing items to me since I was the only one with a normal TA-50. Nine months later, no letters, parcels, or phone calls from my wife and I was psychologically not in a good place. Where I was was a very awful place. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm told I need to take leave and return home, but I have no idea why I'm being sent home only to find an empty house. When I say empty, I mean entirely empty, including all of my clothes. Later, I learned through a neighbor that she had moved some guy into my home for four months and that the word was that she was pregnant. It gets better. She stopped paying my vehicle payments and it was repossessed, she whacked out the bank accounts and maxed up the credit cards purchasing new housewares for her new abode. She would camp out at the ATM and wait for my salary to be deposited into my account before withdrawing all of the money, but some change. I would have tried it, but the closest ATM was 5-7 miles away. I didn't have a vehicle, and it was winter in Kansas. Let me tell you, washing your clothes in the sink and drying them on the stair railing every day since you didn't have a washing machine or a dryer wasn't enjoyable. I had to beg for it. MRE from supplies since I didn't have any money to eat. She made sure of that. I saw her for about 10 minutes before leaving the military, and she chose to tell me she was carrying twins, which clearly weren't mine. And JAG doesn't care about the soldier, just the spouse, and even though she cheated, she was still entitled to my pay, which she was taking. We're clearly divorced, and I left out a lot of the other crap she did, since putting it all in would be a book. If you want to know, leave a comment and I'll share it later.